Screen Actors, this video is about acting technique. Which one is the best one for you? My answer? The one that you create. Huh? Shouldn't I follow Meisner or the method? Or Stella Adler's approach to acting? Or any of the greats from the past? No. You should be aware of what they offer. It would be wise to even take some classes and practice some of those other techniques. But ultimately, as you develop your craft and you define yourself as an actor, you've got to develop your own technique. The reason that acting techniques are so compelling and so many teachers are married to let's some to one form and many actors swear by one technique it's because we need to feel all human beings love to feel and need to feel that we are in control of a situation when you can put a label on something when you feel this is the formula that works makes you feel secure but think about this when you're acting it's not about feeling secure it's about taking a leap of faith and trusting in the unknown and discovering moment to moment what you will do and going with that without second guessing it and without letting your doubts get in the way it takes courage and it takes yes it certainly takes trust and it takes practice so by all means don't disrespect the techniques of the past and but think about this most of those techniques developed as tools for the stage not for the camera Meisner I love Meisner's work, but my biggest criticism of it is that ultimately if you're too attached to it, you're going to have trouble when you're in film and TV because you don't have that moment to moment illusion of reality like you do in a stage play. You're basically shooting fragments of your character's life. It's like taking little pieces of a jigsaw puzzle and in very artificial situations and you've got to be ready to fly and deliver the goods in those artificial situations. There are situations where you're not even going to have an off-camera reader to work uh, to, um, to give you the impulse that's going to extract or bring the truth out of you in the moment. So if you're relying too much on what your partner gives you, what do you do when you don't really have a partner? Right? Christopher Walken, I think most of us would agree, is a wonderful actor. He's multifaceted. He's always compelling to watch. In fact, it's very hard to take your eyes off him when he's on screen. He's funny. He's dangerous, he's sexy, he's unpredictable. When he was asked about his acting technique, he said some wonderful and refreshing things. Basically, he said he invents it and he's not, he doesn't often share what he's doing with the director or his fellow actors. I mean, he shares in the sense that he delivers the goods, but his process for getting there, he said, actually said that sometimes he'll be in front of the camera and he'll be imagining that he's Mickey Mouse. <laughs> now, have you ever heard an acting teacher say, hey, if you want to deliver a really um, compelling performance, think that you're Mickey Mouse in front of the camera. No, you won't learn that in an acting class. 
Am I saying that's going to work for you? No, it works for him. He has had the courage and the willingness to explore and find things that work for him. So to clear up any confusion, this is what I recommend, especially if you're fairly new to acting. By all means, find good teachers. And by good teachers, I mean teachers that you instinctively resonate with, who do bring out the best in you, who inspire you to grow and to feel confident in front of the camera. And you'll know that when you see the result in the work that you film at home and in your auditions. Study with that teacher for a while, but do not form an unhealthy long-term dependency on that one teacher. Branch out and ultimately practice, practice, practice. Don't be in your head and start to develop your own technique. There's really one essential thing that you've got to master to develop a solid technique that will serve you every time. And that's your ability to listen. And that doesn't just mean listening on camera. It starts by learning to listen in life. And what does that look like? Well, for one thing, when someone is talking to you, do you honestly hear just their words? Or are you thinking ahead of what you will say in response to what they're saying? For most of us, it's often the latter. And in that case, you're not really listening. You're listening to yourself, not to the other person. So you want to really become a good, um, a good or even great actor? Start practicing listening in life. Develop the habit, the listening habit of not thinking about what you're going to say. Now, how does that translate into acting? Well, once you master that and you can trust it in front of the camera, you're not going to be thinking about your lines. You're really going to be giving your attention 100% to the person who's speaking to you and trust that when they're done speaking, because of what they've said and how they've said it, you will be able to immediately react to them in a way that's truthful. And that will create magic on camera. Think about these things and then start practicing, practicing, practicing. If this video has made you think, made you look a little bit differently at what you do, if it's inspired you in any way, give it a thumbs up and click subscribe for more tips and techniques that I promise to bring you on a weekly basis. You'll always find in the directions, um, the directions, the, yeah, in the description below this video, uh, a link to my latest online course. Check out everything that I'm offering. Make a decision if it's for you or not. If it isn't, no big deal. If it is, I'll get to know you better and be able to have the honor to be your guide toward a, um, a more successful acting career. You'll also find a link below to my free ebook, which is a complete guide to self taping. So even if you're not interested in the course, definitely get the guide. No obligation. It's yours. Start using it yesterday. And always remember, be spontaneous, 
willing to discover and don't be reasonable.